Okay, now we can have a go at recording some voice with a microphone, so recording audio, converting that to MIDI, cleaning it up, making it look good, and then also uh, exporting it out for notation. Now, um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get a real singer in for this tutorial like I was intending to, so unfortunately you're stuck with me. Um, so I hope people don't ask for their money back listening to my singing because it's pretty dreadful. So uh, maybe we'll fast forward through those bits. Anyway, I'm going to be recording with a microphone going into my USB audio interface. Um, now to help with um, the detection of the audio and converting it to MIDI and trying to find its pitches, it's probably good that I have as little noise in the room as possible. So therefore I'm going to have my speakers turned off and I'm going to be recording with headphones on. Um, this way, no leakage in the room means that the microphone's just picking up my voice, which will make our conversion to uh, MIDI go a lot smoother. So, the first thing we need to do is create ourselves an audio track. I'll double click down here. Singing, that will do. Check we've got some level, test one, two, check, yep, we can see this going, great. So, what I'll do is I'll put my headphones on and have a go at recording. Okay, I'm very sorry to have put you through that. I'm just going to turn on my speakers and then we will carry on with uh, editing this terribly recorded audio, terribly performed audio, I should say, and uh, see if we can get some decent MIDI out of it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now edit this with Melodyne. I can right click and say edit with Melodyne. Remember, this is just a feature that comes with the professional version of um, the Studio One software. It doesn't come with the free version. Uh, other software such as Pro Tools and Logic and Cubase does have this functionality built in as well but it's not quite as uh, easy to work with as what this is. This is by far uh, the best pitch editor that there is around. Okay, so we edit it. Let's see what we've ended up with. A bunch of blobs. That's good. The first thing we can do, I don't, don't even want to listen to it. I'm so embarrassed about it. We're going to correct pitch. At least it did detect that I was in G major, so that's one thing. I'm going to correct the pitch center and correct the pitch drift. And I'm also going to quantize the time straight away. Fastest notes I had in here were eighth notes, quavers, and I'm going to change all those. And then the next thing I'm going to do, before I even do anything else, I'm going to select all the notes, change the setting here to the pitch modulation tool, which controls the vibrato with the note, and I'm going to straighten it all out. So now we're going to sound very robotic, but in the end, what we're looking for is just as much as the, the pitches to be as accurate as possible, so that we can uh, convert it to MIDI nice and easily. Let's have a look at this. Okay, we can hear a little issue at the end. Let's bring up our Melodyne again. Where we go? Wrong one. At the end, where I was supposed to go G to F sharp to G, I didn't sing anywhere close in tune, so it's gone and interpreted it all as just one long G note. So we can just fix that straight away now. I can divide the note up. And now I can snap them back to their pitches, but shift that down to F sharp. Leave that in G. Okay, that's probably not too bad. I'm going to find it easier to edit the rest of it now within the MIDI realm rather than dealing with this audio here. So I'm going to go create myself another MIDI track. So I'm just going to go grab a synth here. The string sound will do. 
okay? And the great thing about Studio One, which I don't think any other pitch editor has yet, maybe Logic does, but we can just drag and drop the analyzed audio onto the MIDI track, and there it all is. We can see it all there, but we can see there's a few notes at the beginning that shouldn't be there. And we can just have a look at what we've got. Can mute my original singing, thank goodness. Okay, we can see there's a few inflections in there that we need to fix. We need to straighten it all out, because remember, we're trying to make this look good for notation, not to sound good. So some of that pitch bending stuff that was going on and going from one note and quickly going up to the other, um, we need to get rid of all that. So I'm going to just quickly go and do that now, and I'll come back to you in a moment once I've cleaned it all up. But just as a quick reminder, what I'm going to be doing first of all is just quantizing everything to an eighth note, keep my velocities all the same, and then go through and delete some of the notes which perhaps shouldn't be there. We'll just see this from the beginning. So a bit of strange stuff going on there. Don't know what those notes are doing. And that went too quickly. That should have been a whole, whole quarter note for that beat. Try it again. Okay. Another note that got triggered a bit strange there, so I'll just fix it up. And I'm going to keep on going through and just by ear doing this, I'm not referring to any music, just doing what sounds good, and I'll come back to you when I'm done. And here we go. Everything is all sorted out now with the singing part. We've got some good uh, MIDI there, which we can now go and export over. Now, for just to help with the exporting um, of, the ex of the MIDI star, MIDI parts to Sir Baileys, I'm just going to get rid of this track here for now. So let me just... Um, Save this first of all, save it as a different file in case I didn't want to delete it um, with MIDI no audio. Now I can just delete that track. I've got our MIDI in there, we should be able to export it all. Now I don't need this melody track at the top anymore because I've gone and recorded it down here, so I'm also going to delete that. Um, and just to help with perhaps the importing of things. Um, okay. I'm going to call that the singing track. We're going to have our going our keys left and our keys right, bass above the drums and guitar above the bass. So when I import it, it's going to be in a better order in terms of interpreting it with the score. So let's just uh, save that and then save as a MIDI file. Right, now we can open it up in Sibelius and import it. Here we are in Sibelius, select our MIDI file and go and find where we had saved it. Open that up. One star for track. Don't import any of that. Notation. Make sure all that stuff's off. We did have some 16th notes in there, so we'll leave that on. That's that. Okay. Right, so our singing part that we had at the top there, that's what we've just done. Now, just one thing I'd quickly like to show you while I'm here is how to put in lyrics. So, lyrics are really easy. You click in the note and you go Command or Control L, and then you can just type in the syllables um, as you sing them or as they uh, need to occur. Now, um, the good thing is that once you type a word or a syllable, you can just push the space bar to move it to the next note. Now, when there's a syllable though, rather than a whole new word, to get to the next note, you need to push the dash key rather than the space bar. Like that. Now, the next word, space bar. At, I, now. Because this was known as a millisma and that there were two pitches over the one syllable for this part, for thy, we just push the space bar twice to move on. And carry on.
Here's another Miller's map. I'll just send the screen up so you can see it better. Here we are. Okay, now the other thing we need to do though, that when we have this thing known as a melismer, where there are two different pitches over the one syllable, we do need to show them up here as well and with a slur. Push, click on a note and push S for slur. Now a slur is different to a tie, a tie which is just a rhythm, rhythm repeating uh, or carrying across across a bar line, um, <clears throat> or to, a, uh, to another note. So here we have this, so this tells the performer that it's going to be two notes sung with the one breath. If it was a violinist and they were playing that, it would be two separate notes played on the one bow. Or if it was a saxophone player, they would be playing two notes also on the one breath. Here we see we've also got a melisma there, so we need to put in a slur as well. And here is one there as well. Now, if a slur needs to go over more than one note, say it needed to go all the way across to over to there, which it doesn't, but let's say it did, what we do is you just push the space bar and it automatically puts it along. So there we are. So, of course, all this other stuff is messy. In fact, I'll really, really quickly just tidy it all up now just to remind you of everything that we need to do. Okay, first of all, I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to delete these bars at this front. We don't need those anymore. Hold down the Command key and Shift. Delete them. Get rid of those. I'm going to go to my instruments to add in a piano so we can replace our keys left and our keys right. And I'm going to move that down. We also need to get a proper drum part to replace our drums. But guitar, and I might also put in a treble line for the guitar as well. Um, because I might rewrite the guitar part in a nicer way. Okay. Here we have all of these instruments looking very messy now. So let's get the keys left hand and we'll just copy that down to that part, piano part and put it all up an octave, holding the command plus up arrow. Keys right hand, triple click it, put that in. Great, now I can delete both of those parts. Now our bass part needs a, a bass cliff. The drums all need to be copied over and I can delete the original one and then we want to apply the percussion pitch map plugin to the drums percussion pitch map okay good we want to put our key signature in of G major and we want to decide what to do with the guitar we can go through and uh, triple click them and go to, where was it? Not under notations, must be under text. Add from notes. We'll analyze all the chords and put the chords over the top. We can do it like that. Uh, and we can also add guitar symbols as well if we want. Add remove chord diagram. And we can do it like that all the way through for the guitarist. That could be um, perfectly acceptable in many situations. Might be a few errors. Or we can just do this, which is actually kind of what I like to do, and which most guitarists would prefer to read, is to just put what are known as slash chords. I'm just going to do the first few bars for you. Um, I think I already did it in the other tutorial, but I just want to show you them again. Change the type of these. This time I'm going to do beats without stems, because I'm not going to be indicating any rhythms here. So I'm just going to put them so they look like that, and I want to type in my chords manually. Going Command K, G. Now the next chord is supposed to be D over A, not D over E. Oops. To G over B. What do we have next? We have C. And I'm just pushing spacebar to move to the next beat. And so on. And I can also put in the chord diagrams for those as well if I want. And so if I've done that, I might want to delete this guitar part. Don't have to, but in this case I am. So what we're ending up with is a really good looking score. 
The last thing I probably just want to do with it is I want to put this, um, some titles in. So let's go to styles, find my title, and click up here. God of Nations. Um, I should probably put the composer info in, but I don't actually know who composed this at the moment. It's probably should. I'm just going to put me as the arranger, though, for now. Not that it's much of an arrangement. Um, and we also need to put in a tempo at the beginning, so we're going to find some tempo text. Here we go. Now, once I've clicked there, I can right-click and choose a tempo, such as Andante. Or I can say crotchet... Uh, crotchet equals, say, 70 beats per minute, I think is what I was recording it at. That's a perfectly acceptable tempo indication, and for a lot of situations it's perhaps better than using the Italian terms. Um, and then also we want to tell the musicians how loud they should be singing or playing. Click on a note, Command or Control E, and it creates a little flashing cursor. You can right click, and then you can tell them how loud you want them to go. Now, if everything's a little bit squashed up, you can move everything around. Um, if you want someone to sing a little bit louder, or to play a little bit louder, you can put in what's known as a crescendo. Um, in this case, we could call it a hairpin. So I'm going to click there. Maybe I'll do it over those that whole bar, and I'll push H for hairpin. And then I'll need to tell them how loud I want them to be playing at the end. So in this case here, they're going to start off at mezzo forte, and through that bar, they're going to get a bit louder and come in here at forte. To do the opposite, if you wanted them to get a bit quieter, you can select, even let's say, if we make it just over those notes there, I can hold down shift and push H, and there it is there. Now I can put in more expression markings and make them come down to soft or piano. There we go, and there is our score, a really, really good looking score, based completely upon MIDI performances. But the key thing is, is that you've got to clean up the MIDI to make it look really, really nice back in your DAW, Studio One in our case, and it makes this whole bringing over to Sibelius a lot, lot easier. Okay, I think I've got to the end of the tutorial, so thanks for sticking with me through it. Um, email me if you have any questions or if anything hasn't quite made sense or if you've come across any problems. I'm really, really interested to know how this goes for everybody. Um, you can email sales at learningideas.co.nz. Um, yeah, any feedback would be greatly appreciated.